This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Welcome back. This is Byline here at Amherst Media, a public affairs show uh, sponsored with the Amherst League of Women Voters and uh, Amherst Media. And we've been uh, meeting here every Friday night and repeated on Monday nights to uh, bring people up to date with what's happening with our town government as we continue the transition from our old form of government uh, to our new form of government. And tonight we have a very special show and a very special guest. Our assistant town manager, Dave Zomek, is here. Uh, we are all struggling right now with uh, the uh, health uh, situation that has been affecting our country, the world. And it's beginning to show some really significant impacts on our economy as well. And so we want to talk with you uh, this evening about the coronavirus and how our town is responding, our town government and the impacts that we're seeing in our town in terms of uh, our higher education institutions and our businesses, et cetera. But Dave, let's begin sort of at the beginning here with uh, trying to get an understanding of what the town's general, the town government's general policies are with regard to how we're going to be doing business and, and what we're recommending that people do in our community in order to stay safe and healthy. Sure. Well, first, thank you very much for having me, Stan. Uh, You're welcome. I appreciate being on your show. Um, obviously, these are uncharted waters for mm -hmm. all of us, and uh, you know, we we are sending our very best out to all the residents of Amherst, all those families, all those employees, all those businesses, uh, and our partners uh, throughout town and the region. Um, it's a time when we're all going to be called on to pull together, and and I think um, we're we're already seeing some of the best of of our community. So i um, happy to be here talking about uh, what's going on. Um, I can't say enough about uh, uh, our team in Amherst. Uh, our town manager is surrounded by some incredibly talented people uh, with our health director, Julie Fetterman, our, our fire chief, Tim Nelson, uh, police chief, uh, Scott Livingstone, and superintendent of public works, uh, Guilford Mooring. And uh, they and, and uh, supporting uh, team members around them are really stepping up uh, in this time. So Paul Bockelman is is uh, leading us all, working very closely with Lynn Grismere, our, our uh, uh, president of our town council. Uh, we've been meeting um, uh, in limited fashion because of social distancing one-on-one. Uh, uh, -on -one, Mostly remotely uh, and many some one-on-one. -on exactly, mm -hmm. many remote meetings, but also really trying to model what we're asking uh, those folks in our community to do, which is to social distance as much as possible. So uh, Social distance means staying six, seven, ten feet apart if you're able to do so. Exactly. And um, just trying to create distance. As we've done on our set tonight, we usually sit much closer together, but we are now about six feet or more from each other in order to have that distance that uh, health professionals recommend. Right, right, absolutely. And then if you, if there is an occasion where we do have to meet in person, um, or we're, we're also um, taking the opportunity to, to use some of those uh, platforms out there that allow you to meet remotely. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess the message I want to send uh, today and, um, uh, you know, in the coming days and weeks is that, you know, Amherst government, uh, uh, your leadership is solid. Uh, we're working, uh, as I said, uh, behind Paul Bachman, our town manager, um, and so we are trying to both uh, address the situation as it unfolds, and everything is changing really hour by hour, day by day, um, but that we are here, uh, we are here for all the residents, uh, and we're trying to anticipate what needs our community will have in the coming days and weeks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and with regard to meetings of town boards and um, entity so you know the town council doesn't meet every week it hasn't met every week although right now this is a period of time where they probably might meet a little bit more frequently are they actually meeting in town hall are they meeting remotely uh, virtually how are they how are they conducting their business so uh, the town council did uh, meet on Monday night uh, really in on a virtual platform 
um, and that will continue. So they will have a, a meeting uh, next Monday and in all likely the Monday after that. And, and the council, uh, I believe, through the leadership of, of Lynn Grismere, will, will want to be as consistent as possible. Um, I think it's, you know, people want to see that we are here and we're operating. Obviously, the town council will be prioritizing those items that really need to be addressed uh, working with Paul Bachman, uh week to week. So um, there will be a meeting. So is there a lot of focus in their meetings now on the coronavirus and the town's response? Are they doing, are they also doing uh, usual business, shall we say, things that they had been working on and, and scheduled uh, to debate and discuss certain ordinances and whatever along the way? Or is it really mostly focused on the current situation? Well, I think um, in the weeks ahead, there will be, hopefully all of us would like to see a return to business. But right now, the focus is what are those priority items that must be dealt with in the town? Again, working with Paul um, and, and finding out how the town council can be supportive of our residents, our businesses, uh, working with our, our uh, state rep and state senator how do how are, how are we communicating? What are the resources that the town of Amherst needs uh, that we can communicate back through Lynn, through Paul, uh, to our representative and our uh, and our senator? Mm -hmm. So for the time being, it's really the the prioritization of those items. I do think in weeks ahead, months ahead, clearly we will get They'll back get to back to business as yes. usual. Although. They, they may continue to meet in different ways than usual, but we'll get back to the substance of matters that uh, they've been working on uh, as this recedes more into the background. That's, that's our hope. Okay. And um, I think earlier we had chatted a little bit about um, those boards and committees that uh, do, that are adjudicatory, uh, that deal with regulatory issues, mm -hmm. our planning board, our zoning board zoning, of appeals. Yeah. So we've taken a little hiatus uh, between uh, this past Monday and um, Friday, April 3rd, those boards and committees will not meet. We're working very diligently. We have a wonderful IT department in town. They're working to see how we can get up and running, again, using remote uh, technologies and those platforms that allow could allow for the Planning Board, Zoning Board, Conservation Commission, Historical Commission uh, to begin functioning again in the in the new normal, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that uh, when those boards and committees are able to meet, that there is the ability for the public to uh, weigh in and uh, participate mm -hmm. as best we can uh, as we're still adhering to social distancing. And are there methods that uh, you've started to identify of how the public, it's a little bit easier to imagine how maybe through Zoom or these other platforms where the six or five or ten members of a particular board could all dial in, click in, and now they're all on the screen and they're talking with each other. So you can imagine that part of it. Um, how do you imagine the public being able to participate um, and, uh, and, and either observe or actually testify uh, and bring their business before boards of that nature? Well, I think we've already solved the observing. We know that we can do that. Uh, and that, that took place last uh, Monday when the council met uh, remotely. Um, and, and there are, as you and mentioned... And how does that happen? If I'm, in the, if I'm sitting at home and I want to watch the town council meeting and they're all in their homes, how do I plug in? Well, that would either uh, happen through Amherst Media or through the town's website, a, a live stream uh, through okay. the town's website. Um, and again, as we move forward, we're going to be looking at ways through those platforms like Zoom, uh, like Teams, that's another platform that, that is in, in common use. Uh, how do we get that, the, the ability for the public to uh, weigh in? Okay. I know that the Northampton City Council uh, met uh, this week, and they, are, they too are experimenting. So we're also reaching out to our other municipal friends and partners, colleagues, uh, to see how, how they're doing, and, and we're learning from them. So we already know through technology how we can meet. We also know through technology how we can observe, and you're working through how the public can participate. Yes. And so that's stay tuned, and hopefully by April 3rd, when uh, the moratorium, if you will, of uh, official meetings of these 
uh, boards like the Zoning Board and Planning Board uh, hopefully will expire and won't need to extend that moratorium. At that point, hopefully you'll have a solution for how people can actually participate when a matter is pending before those boards that relates to them, uh, to their selves, or right. what they've placed. And that's the goal, and I want people to know we're thinking about that because we want to be cognizant of those, we want to be cognizant of, of, of the business community and the development community. We want to do anything we can on the side of local government to help keep the, the economy moving forward, but I don't want to put that out in front of right now, Paul Bachman, his team, myself mm -hmm. uh, and Lynn are really working on how do we address the needs, the immediate needs yeah. of those people in our, our community. Good. Well, it's also good that you raised uh, the, the point about the business community and let's talk about both our major industry in town, which is higher education, and the fact that these institutions have closed, the students have gone home. All three institutions, I, I know for sure Amherst and I've heard, and of course UMass, and UMass was going to come back but they've now told students to expect to complete their coursework online for the remainder of the semester. Hampshire College, I've missed that. What's the situation there? Um, I actually don't. I, I think in general we, we, we assume that Hampshire is following suit as well with that, mode. yes. Okay, um, um, but we're not exactly sure, but they're, it's, we're not seeing a lot of students around town right now. No, each yeah. each one of the campuses um, is is taking a role in housing and uh, providing services for those students who, for some reason, couldn't Can get home. Go home. Exactly, yes. whether they're international okay. students or or <laughs> other under other circumstances. So again, we're in touch with all three institutions, trying to make sure we know how many students are still on campus and if there's any uh, needs that the, the schools may have uh, uh, from our side of things. And of course the uh, reduction in the presence of students means that's uh, going to have a pretty big impact on our businesses. Bookstores and you know Amher Cinema and restaurants. Uh, what are you hearing from the Chamber of Commerce from the bid with regard to what the short-term immediate impacts have started to uh, be in relation to these businesses. So they're 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 pretty uh, they're pretty severe. They're pretty uh, serious. Um, we're in direct contact with the bid and chamber, having weekly meetings with them uh, <laughs> uh, remotely uh, at least. And uh, again, the bid and chamber are, are doing a lot of that outreach. How can they help some of those businesses that are struggling so much? As most people know, some of the restaurants at least are trying to stay open. Uh, in a takeout format, take out, yeah. um, and I think that's working for a number of them, at least in the short term. Um, I think, again, uh, the, the Bidden Chamber will be looking uh, to our state rep, rep and, and uh, state senator for more uh, and deeper assistance that might come through the state or federal government for those businesses that are, are going to be tremendously affected by this downturn. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I think right now we're, we're working with some of the restaurants. Um, uh, again, can, are there ways that uh, local government can help uh, keep some of that going? I mean, uh, I think we're all trying to order as much takeout as we possibly can <laughs> to keep these wonderful... Try to support our local businesses exactly. so that they'll be there when this is over. Exactly. Because we don't know how long it's going to last. And that said, it will eventually go away. And when it goes away, we don't want a bunch of, bunch of empty storefronts and businesses, uh, successful businesses, uh, having been put away as a result of, of these problems. So, right, right. Uh, and that's not something that the town can do anything about immediately. This is really going to require some state support. Have the businesses asked for anything in particular locally that, that they think the local government might do or is, is really the focus on trying to figure out state support? I think most of the most of the the requests are really going up through the state. Uh, as I said, uh, you know there are significant conversations having at the state level because, of course, this affects all 351 towns and cities and towns in Massachusetts and all of those businesses. You know, hundreds of thousands of businesses right here in the Commonwealth. Yeah. I did want to talk a little bit, uh, Stan, about. Um, if people have questions, where do they go? That's where um, I was hoping yeah. we could go next, but I do want to ask one other yeah. thing before we do that. 
Um, are we going to see some impacts on things like, for example, I think about our water system and um, that we have three campuses that were major water users um, and they're, I'm assuming they all got their water through uh, the Amherst system and therefore that's going to have a revenue implication. Do you have any thoughts or has there been any uh, assessment of what the impact is going to be on, on those funds because uh, those are set up as uh, separate uh, uh, like Enterpr water enterprises, enterprise funds, yes. and so do we know what the impact is? And is water the and sewer the only area where we think we're going to see a major, a potential yeah. major impact? Well, let me start by reassuring everyone that um, our water and and our water in particular, but our water and sewer systems are in fantastic shape. There are no concerns about either one of those systems. It is a core function of our government to provide mm -hmm. clean and potable water to all of our residents and businesses. So first and foremost, um, those systems are running fine. Uh, we consider those a, a very high priority. So safeguarding our, um, our, our, our staff in DPW, uh, these very technical folks who run our water and wastewater system is one of our highest priorities. And that's why I mentioned them at the outset of this interview as really a core component of the town manager's team with fire, police, health, and DPW. So first and foremost, th those systems are in very good shape and those will continue. Um, uh, down the road, we will see some impacts to uh, revenues, no doubt about it. Um, but again, uh, that's really kind of secondary right now. We wanna make sure that the campuses with those uh, students they're housing, all, all of our residents, any of our businesses, um, our, our uh, senior facilities, uh, both in South Amherst, Central Amherst, uh, are all uh, receiving uh, uh, water and, and wastewater services uninterrupted. Um, down the road, uh, some of those enterprises uh, systems will um, feel the hit mm -hmm. from less water, but right now that is not a major concern. We're really focused on making sure we keep all of those Everything systems running. Everything is functioning running. properly. Exactly. And it's really a two-month revenue hit because it, we were relatively close to the end of the school year. And so it's really probably going to be about a couple of months of revenue uh, because if everything goes well, everybody will be back in town in September and things will be back to normal. Yeah. So. You mentioned the schools just for a second. Yeah. I might take a, a moment to, to compliment the wonderful work of Superintendent Mike Morris and his team. Uh, they are uh, doing a terrific job in particular right now, keeping all of the teachers and children and families um, engaged during mm -hmm. this challenging time. But also, really importantly, um, they are providing uh, the, the uh, staff there uh, working in the kitchens of our schools are actually providing lunches for those students who would normally be getting meals, a breakfast mm. and lunch, uh, through the, the, the state and federal uh, programs that are available to them. So right now, the schools are producing those meals and actually delivering them to about 11 different locations in Amherst. Uh, so those families and those children will still be getting that meal during that That's time, terrific. those meals actually, yeah. uh, during the day, uh, five days a week. Great. So these are the kinds of examples of people stepping up and, and, and I can't say enough. things happen that need to happen. Exactly, and our That's partnership terrific. is so strong with uh, the superintendent and, and his staff. Great, so let's pivot to what you were uh, opening up uh, another subject, which is people have lots of questions and there are, there are places you can get the best answers and then there are places where you go for certain things and other places where you go for other things. So let's just sort of start from the beginning. For people who want to understand more about the virus and uh, how viruses spread and things of that nature, um, that's something you, you don't call town hall for, the public health department. Uh, the town has some uh, some links on, on the website uh, yeah, you we, mentioned? Yeah, we understand that everybody is, is very concerned. They're getting their news and information from, from a lot of sites uh, and, and sources. We want them to visit our website, um, our, our main web page um, uh, for the town of Amherst, then provides them links and, and opportunities to go deeper depending on the department. But our, our uh, health department has lots and lots of resources. So I would, I would certainly start there. We want to make sure that we um, keep our, our health staff um, able to respond to you know, priority situations mm -hmm. in town, to yeah. work with our department heads. So um, if you have questions, I would start with the website. 
if people have specific questions about uh, their own health or their family's health or, or friends' health um, that uh, are really uh, uh, more, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this, yeah. they really need to go to their primary care provider for that and not call our Probably health department. Probably starting by phone. By phone, absolutely. making a determination with the nurse or the nurse practitioner and the doctor whether a visit would be necessary and then under what conditions. Right, exactly. And I think that's the, that's the, um, that's the guidance we're getting from mm -hmm. our Department of Public Health and the CDC. Call your primary care physician if you're having uh, uh, symptoms of any kind. Again, keeping in mind that the, the flu is also out there, still out there. Mm -hmm. um, so call your, your PCP first. Um, and if you're in real distress, that crosses a line. Absolutely. And what do you do if you're in distress? What would you normally do? You would call 911. Call if it's 9 -1 -1. a health emergency, by all means, please call 911. Um, uh, uh, I just met earlier this morning with, with a number of our staff. Uh, town manager had a meeting with his leadership team, and, and Chief Nelson and his staff are fully prepared to uh, respond to any emergency, uh, along with our great fire, uh, police department. Uh, in town. So if it's a health emergency, please call 911. But other, other, um, you know, if you just have general questions about your own health or your family self, call your primary care physician. Mm -hmm. That's where you should start. And if you want to learn more, go online and you can start with the town website. But right. You can obviously Google and CDC must have a lot of information up and I think you even have a link to the CDC we do. on we do. the website. But there's plenty of information out there that you can read online if you'd like. What kind of feedback are you getting from, um, from your health department uh, staff, from the uh, fire department, from the police department in terms of the contact that they're experiencing from uh, the residents here in town? Uh, are they getting a lot of calls? Are they, uh, what, what's the nature of these, uh, the kind of interactions that they're having? Yeah, by and large, Stan, I would say that people are very positive, they're very caring, they're very understanding. Um, they understand that this is going to take all of us as a community to get to get through the next couple of weeks and months. So people have a tr seem to have a, a tremendous amount of patience, um, but that contact is important. So um, we want to encourage people uh, across town government if they have questions for us. Staff is there. They may not be there in town hall or in the LSSE department, but they are on call and, and will respond to their phone calls or their emails from wherever they are uh, based on how we've social distanced So all them. hands are truly on deck even though you may not find them in their offices. That's right. And even though these buildings may be closed to the public and that's a precaution. That's not to... Exactly. People aren't off on vacation. They're not no, off being lazy. Not. They just, the, for the safety of everybody involved, we need to minimize the contact that people have with each other for this period of time. Absolutely, you said it very well. We want to model the same behavior that is being asked of everyone throughout the country. We're modeling that in town government. We are, uh, department heads are keenly aware of, of what things are on the horizon in the business community, um, uh, in the regulatory community, and their staffs are ready to respond to you either uh, by phone or by uh, by email, um, or by on one of these other platforms on Zoom mm -hmm. or Team, uh, as uh, as things come about. So. And this is a really great period for people to be maximizing the use of the technology, in general, you know, calling your neighbors to see how they're doing, as opposed to knocking on their door. I'm sure, they'd love to see your face, but at this point, it's best to try to have some distance but still show that you care about your neighbors and, and what's happening around you. Yes, and a great example of that, it's so important, I'm glad you raised that, that um, there are a number of people in our community, particularly, se particularly seniors, who may really, uh, they might not be getting that face-to-face, uh, that one-on-one -face, that -on -one or group setting in our senior center or through a delivery or something of, of that sort. So our senior center director is setting up different systems for check-ins for phone calls uh, for those seniors who are, are 
a little bit more advanced technologically. There may be some of those platforms that we talked about where we can check in with them that way. But we've got volunteers checking in with as many I people as we can. I know a lot of seniors remotely. who are busy on their Facebook pages yeah. and Twitter and uh, using their technology. So. Yeah. Um, I, I did want to touch with people for seniors. I did also want to mention that we're doing the very best we can to continue those food delivery, those mm -hmm. those really primary food delivery uh, systems like Meals on Wheels. Yeah. We've changed our practices a little bit. There's no longer that contact, if you will, but meals are still being delivered uh, out to locations where those seniors need them. Um, right. So, well, I want to thank you for joining us today and for the good work that you and your colleagues in town government are doing to try to help first keep the town safe and healthy and second to keep the wheels of government turning so that um, we can get back to normal as quickly as possible when uh, we can uh, change and go back to our old habits of of uh, being more uh, being closer together <laughs> around tables and in interviews like this so Thank you for all your good work. Well, thank you, Stan, and I'm happy to come on uh, in future future shows if yes, that... Uh, we may have you on for updates as time goes on, even if it's just for a few minutes, uh, even if we're covering some other subjects, because we want to keep people informed. Um, so thank you for good. joining us. Thanks for watching out for your neighbors. Uh, we hope you all stay healthy.